That poster was put up there for people to see. I saw it. I don't have another copy. I do. There's no need for anybody else to see that. Nate Phillips belongs to me. Hmm. Know where he is? Not to pinpoint, but I'll find him. You talk big. The world's a large place. Not that large. He's a man. There's nowhere he can lay down his feet that I can't walk. I'll find him. What's going to happen when you do find him? Maybe we better not talk about that, Sheriff. If I told you, you'd run me right out of town. <laughs> wasn't much of a town, a wide spot on the road where cattlemen and ranchers met and lived. The wealth that ran underground hadn't been discovered yet, and most people still believed that the only way to live good was to work hard. One man who didn't go along with this thought was Josh Randall. Josh had ridden a long trip. He'd come halfway across Texas, but he'd had a special reason to be in Big Ben. Hi. You want a fire, Sheriff? I'm not the Sheriff. Well, where is he? He's down the street. I'm in the store. Hobie Gilman, Rangers. Well, power is here. Anything going on? No, nothing special. I ride through about twice a year. It's a quiet town. I don't want to see anything change. What's your name? Josh Randall. I'm a bounty hunter. Well, it's one of the things my friends call me, but you can hear other names. I should have known from the hat. Yeah, that's a dandy, isn't it? Got that up at Archer City. Little John Cahill paid for it. You got a name for that? Well, I call it a mare's leg. Kind of like a hog's leg, only not quite so mean. Kind of big, isn't it? I guess. But if I have to use it, I want to make sure the message gets to where I'm pointing. Well, what are you doing here in Big Bend? Looking. Who for? Name's Janet York. You know her? I hear she's working in town here in one of the saloons. Well, she could be around. Her name is new to me, but that doesn't mean anything. What's that? New job. Name's Nate Phillips. Picked up the poster up in Archer City. I will pay the sum of $500 for information telling me the whereabouts of Nate Phillips. He was last seen in the company of a girl named Janet York. To collect this reward, get in touch with Mr. Black, General Delivery San Antonio. Who's this Mr. Black? Someone who wants Nate Phillips? Is he worth $500? <laughs> He's to Mr. Black. That's all I need. Well, you've done pretty well with this Dodge. How come more people haven't gone into the trade? Well, job isn't hard to get. Keeping it caused all the trouble. Time a man gets his name on one of these, he done stepped on somebody. Now, a lot of people aren't ready to kick back. How do you know this one's any good? Hmm? How do you know this uh, fella Black it has got $500 or that he'll pay it? I don't often lose. Well, it's not a law poster. There's nothing to back it up. I wouldn't pay any attention to it if it was me. Well, that's the difference between us. Well, I'll tell you what. The price of a hat should come out empty-handed. Done. Now, what are you doing here? I want to make sure I'm not stepping on any feet by going after Phillips. I understand the girl, Jeanette York's in town. Now, maybe Phillips is, too. If you're going after him, I just want to make sure I'm not in your way. No, if he's here, he's yours. There's nothing in our books. All right, fine. How long are you going to be in town? This afternoon. I've got to head down to Franklin, then back to Austin. Why? Well, I just thought if you can be around a while, you and I go have a drink, talk things over. After all, we, we both got the same kind of job. Oh? Sure. We're both on the same side of the fence. Now, the only difference is that you bring him in for the law, and I do it for the reward. Well, there's one other difference. How's that? I don't enjoy it. <laughs> Sometimes he ran into people like that. They had the wrong idea, but it didn't pay to try and put them straight. Bounty hunting wasn't too bad a way to live. He got to see a lot of the country. He met a lot of people. And it was better than digging in the dirt or standing on his feet all day back of a bank counter. It was a living. And now and then, a good one. His income came from finding lost brothers and runaway husbands. Josh liked the life, and it seemed to like him. The word was that Jeanette York was working in Big Ben. 
there were only a couple of places in town where she could hang her hat, Josh tried the first and hit it lucky. Miss York? Miss York, I wonder if I can see you for a minute. What do you want? I'd like to talk to you. Beat it. Miss York. Maybe you didn't know what the lady said. <laughs> I wonder if I could see you for a minute. Oh, is this all right? Fine. Would you like a drink? Mm, no, thank you. I don't know you, do I? No, I don't think so. You'd remember. What do you want to see me about? Where's Nate Phillips? Who's asking? Josh Randall. Does that make the answer any easier? Well, what'd you want to see him for? He's got a price on his head. I've got an empty pocket. Well, what are they paying for skunk these days? You're the girl, aren't you? Yeah. Where do I find him? Well, I haven't seen him for a couple of months. Who's this guy, Black? Man with money. Where was it the last time you saw him? Right here. Only like I say, it's been a couple of months. We were, uh... Friends. Said he was going to take me to New York. Introduce me to a lot of big people. He could sure talk. Tell you almost anything. Then what happened? Oh, we made a lot of plans. How we were going to sweep into the big town. He was going to lay it at my feet. He was some salesman. Then he left you? No. No, it was the other way around. Oh, I went for him, but... After I found out, I, I just couldn't believe anything he said anymore. About what? How he treated his wife. <clears throat> Does she live here in town? South, about five miles on the way to Franklin. You can't miss it. Maybe Josh should have been surprised. He wasn't. Nate's reputation had run before him like a small, dirty river, foul and muddy. How you doing? Hi. Well, I found a girl. She couldn't tell me much. Where are you up to now? I understand that Philip's wife lives out on that road to Franklin. I'm gonna ride out, have a talk with her. Oh, hold on, I'll give you some company. You riding out of town? Yeah, I gotta go down to Franklin. Well, step it up. You with a busy man. Ooh. the book. Don't step outside of them. You got no worries. It don't work. You have to climb over. You Miss Phillips? Yeah. Is Nate Phillips? The last name will do. What do you want? Is your husband around? You two better get over that fence again. I don't want no talk about him. Well, we don't mean any harm, Miss Phillips. We'd, uh, we'd just like to know if your husband is here. You asking for the law or for yourself? For me. I haven't seen him in over a year. Do you have any idea we might be able to find him? Why do you want him? Business. You're asking questions? Don't seem right. I can't ask some in return. What kind of business? Pretty, but it don't tell me nothing. I can't read. Uh, it offers $500 for information uh, about your husband. He couldn't do anything that'd make him worth that much. A man named Black seems to think so. I don't know him. And he don't know Nate, not to give away that kind of money. A year ago, he walked out on me. I heard he was up in Big Ben a couple of months ago. It could be. I didn't see him. Or hear from him. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? 
They're given $500 for him? Yes, ma'am. I wouldn't give more than a 20 cent piece. And that'd be to put a 44 between his eyes. A very generous man, Nate is. Saddled up one day and rode out. Left me with his son and three dollars. It was a new story to Hobie, but Josh had heard it before, a dozen times. This time, the words were a little different, but the account was the same. Once she'd been pretty, a little of the softness still showed through the tired lines. Nate had found her and promised the moon, and this time he'd even married the girl. Then the glow had worn off and he'd gotten tired of her. She didn't know why. None of the ones before had known either. He'd just gotten tired and moved on. There was nothing they could do for her. But she was able to tell them that Nate might be found around Franklin. She'd heard he was there with another woman, and she guessed it was true. With Nate, it would be. Thank you very much. Say, if you do see him, will you give him a message for me? Well, yes, ma'am. It won't do no good. You won't pay no mind to it, but tell him for me. Tell him I still love him. The two men rode to Franklin. On the way, an understanding began to form between them. The rangers started to wonder if he'd been too fast to form an opinion of the body hunter. Franklin had two hotels. At the first one, they drew a blank. At the second, it looked as if Josh had found what he was looking for. Nate Phillips was registered, but the clerk wasn't happy about it. Sorry, but you're too late. What do you mean? You got killed this morning. Sure must have gone at it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess Mr. Black isn't gonna pay for this information. It was a woman Phillips had been seeing. She wasn't quite Nate's style, but the line he'd given her was standard. They're going to be married, and she was going to set him up in business. She told him about Phillips' roommate, a man named Jack Brandes. She was sure he was the one who'd killed Phillips. She told of trouble between the two men, of arguments and bickering. She told of her attempt to get Phillips to stop seeing Brandy's. She explained that she knew something like this would happen if the association continued. She said a lot of things, and under them all was the story of her love for the dead man. Both Hobie Gilman and Josh Randall could see the Phillips plan being set up, only this time it hadn't worked. At her insistence, they allowed her one last look at the body. It's not him. What? It's not Nathan, it's not him. Sure isn't. How do you know? Just isn't. Phillips has got light brown hair, tall, in his late 30s. That's not him. This is Jack Brandis. Well, Mr. Black's got company. What? Texas wants Nate Phillips, too. Nate Phillips couldn't have had more than an hour's start off. At the local stable, they learned he'd bought a sorrel mare about the time they'd ridden into town. The blacksmith said he'd ridden south, toward Houston. They rode hard, but Phillips rode faster. For two days, they stayed behind him. Several times, the trail ran out. They managed to pick it up, but they were always a little too late. The road led to Houston, and the two men separated. Hobie started at one end of the street, Josh at the other. The hotels were checked. If Nate Phillips was sleeping, he wasn't doing it in any of the regular places. According to their figuring, Phillips had been in town a full day ahead of them, but none of the bartenders or restaurant keepers had seen him. Josh didn't find Nate, but he did find a few lost friends. He made a mental note to come back when he had more time. And then, in a side street bar, the curtain went up. Felix. Well, how are you? I haven't seen you for a long time. Pull up a sharp rock. I didn't know you were in Houston. I'd appreciate it if he didn't know it around. <laughs> you still got the same trouble, huh? You know me, Josh. You know I don't ask for it, but they just won't leave me alone. Felix, I've never seen you walk away from a woman. You don't look close. How long have you been in town? About a year. 
Got myself married. You? I don't believe it. Had to. It was the only way to keep the rest of them off. I don't know, Felix. If we could find a way to bottle your charm, we'd both be rich. I'll give you my share right now. <laughs> How come you're in Houston? Oh, job. Who is it this time? Name is Nate Phillips, you know. What about it, Felix? Yeah, he's been around. See him the last few days? Where can I find him? Here, yeah. have an egg. Where's Nate Phillips, Felix? I'm afraid I can't help you, Josh. Can't or won't? Put it down the way you like it. Phillips killed a man in Franklin. You've got to answer for it. Yeah, and I don't want him to kill one in Houston. He'll never get to you. Look, Josh, we've known each other for a long time, right? We've always gotten along, huh? Right. And I've seen you do some good things for people. I like to think that I'm your friend. But don't try to buy it back by pressing on this. You remember Tonopah? What about it? You could have gone to jail for that shooting. It wasn't my fault. The girl was a liar. You know what she said wasn't the truth. Sure, I know. But I got you out of it, didn't I? Yeah. You owe me one, don't you? Yeah. Well, you can pay it off right now. Look, I've been happy, Josh. For the first time in my life, I got a woman I love. I got a house and a good job. I don't want to lose any of them. Where's Nate Phillips? You'll never know where it came from. All right. It's a place on the other side of town called the Stag. He's been hanging out there since he got into Houston. You see him there? Just heard. I'll find him. You know, you'll have to press. Why? Well, the bartender's probably on Phillips' side. He won't give you the time of day. Is he there now? Mm hmm That's all I need. See you, Felix. Josh figured this might be a time when the law should be standing next to him. He found Hobie, and the two men made their way to the stag. The reception was warm, but it didn't stay that way. Evening, gents. What's your pleasure? Uh, we'd like to have a little information. Sure thing. What would you like on the side, bourbon or rye? Oh, uh, no, you just keep it in the bottle. We're looking for a fellow who calls himself Nate Phillips. Never heard of him. Well, he's about my height, a little heavier. Light brown hair, he's in the late 30s. Rides a saw mare. Nope, sorry. Well, you're wearing a badge. That question went to you nice, and I want it back the same way. Nate Phillips, about his size, light brown hair in his late 30s, understand? At least you want to be gumming your meat from now on. You'll tell me what you know. All right, I'll tell you. Was he in here? Yeah. Coming this afternoon, he got blind drunk, threatened to shoot up the place. I gave him a bottle of whiskey. Took him up to my room. Is he up there now? Oh, this girl came in looking for him. Said she's supposed to meet him here. I sent word up this fellow you're looking for to come downstairs. Oh, well, uh, where's he now? So one of you didn't see him yourself. Two of them walked out of here just before you come in. Where'd they go? The girl said she was hungry. I told them about a place down the street. Well, in case we miss him, uh, you don't let on, huh? Not me. I got no love for him. All right, keep it that way. From the door of the bar, they had no trouble seeing the cafe. Its light cut a window in the night. As they moved toward it, neither man knew what to expect. But both knew they weren't alone. Josh's warmth had gotten to Hobie. And the ranger hoped they'd both be standing after they met Phillips. Who's the girl? Janet York. Remember? I was hunting for her up in Big Ben. I wonder what she's doing here. I don't know, but I got a feeling it's got something to do with that $500 reward for Phillips. All right, you wait here. Oh, no deal. <laughs> I've got a piece of him. It sure is good to see you, honey. I don't think I was ever so surprised in all my life when I heard you was looking for me. Nate, all that trouble we had up north, it was all a... Well, what's the matter, honey? <laughs> Thanks. We must be 
getting soft. Phillips and the girl were taken to jail. She admitted right away that she'd gone after Nate for the same reward Josh was after. It was a different story with him, though. He didn't know any Jack Brandies. He didn't know anything about a fight in Franklin. He didn't know anything. Then after four hours, it was a race to see who'd get tired first. Josh and Hobie weren't much ahead. All right, I killed him. I killed him. Now, will you leave me alone? My head's coming unscrewed. Well, why'd you do it? Oh, I don't know. We had some sort of an argument. I was supposed to set the old girl up, and then we were going to take her. Jack didn't think I was working fast enough. Well, there's your story. I can go see Mr. Black. How come you know him? Hmm? Black, how come you know him? Do a little job for him. He wants you. That right? Even offer a reward, which I'll be very happy to take from him. Well, where is he now? San Antonio, in care of general delivery. <laughs> What's so funny? You find out. You sure enough find out. <laughs> What's a joke? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You just go ask Mr. Black. Yeah, that's what you do. You go ask Mr. Black. in charge of general delivery in San Antonio gave them Mr. Black's address. It was a funny place to live, but maybe he was an official. He wasn't. You, uh, Mr. Black? Yeah, that's right. What do you want? You send this out? Yeah, what about it? You got $500? You know where Phillips is? Yeah. In jail. Where? In jail. What for? Murder. The way it looks, they're gonna hang. Who did it? Who did it? Who put him away? He did. What? I ought to break your back for doing this to me. All the time I've been in here, all, I, all I've been thinking about is what I was gonna do when I finally got out and got him. And you gotta lock him up. All I wanted you to do was find him, not lock him up. You gotta go jail him for me. All I wanted was to have him staked out so I know where he'd be when I got out of here. Why, you made your employer very unhappy. I'm surprised you're not fired, man, now. Mister, what did you want me to find him for? Why did you want me to hunt him down? I wanted to kill him. Why? Well, that's none of your business. Look, mister, I rode across the state of Texas doing your work. Now I figure you owe me something. Well, three years ago up in San Antonio, Phillips met my wife. Two weeks after he said hello to her, she said goodbye to me. I didn't see her again for about a year and a half. When I did, I made up my mind I was going to kill him. That's all there is to it. Well, I guess that's enough. I'm real sorry you went to any trouble. Obi, wait a minute. Mr. Black? There were times when Josh lost, when he covered half the country and came up with a pound of nothing. Obi hated to see the chase come to an end. He'd learned to like and respect Josh Randall, and he felt a little sad at the outcome. But the ranger hadn't learned everything about the body hunter. As he'd said himself, he didn't often lose. You ready to go? Well, where to? Well, you remember you made me a bet that I'd come out of this one with nothing? I remember. What about it? Well, it isn't much, but it's something. Well, you're not going to try to hold me to it with that. Come on, let's you and me go find the nearest hat store, huh? No. Hi. My name's Steve McQueen. I hope you like what you just saw. It's kind of a new approach to Westerns. And I hope you like Josh Randall. Oh, he's not a lawman, but he's got a lot of friends who are. And they like him because he respects them, them and their job. 
Since Josh doesn't wear a badge, he can take the shortest distance between two people. Uh, on these occasions, his lawman friends kind of turn their head, wish they could use the same method. The stories on Wanted Dead or Alive are about the people of the time, their dreams, their problems, their happiness. Take this one, for instance. Woman put this up. She's looking for a lost husband, and this one. And this old boy here is looking for her own mare with a bad leg. And this one. Well, now. Why is old Jed Kingsley looking for someone who saw him shoot Skinny Ted? How the heck did he shoot him in the first place? Well, there's a lot of stories on Wanted Dead or Alive, and they've all got one thing in common. They all happen to people. Honest and dishonest ones. All with a problem. All with an empty space they wanted Josh to fill for them. Any way you slice it, Wanted Dead or Alive is a good show, full of action, drama, and adventure. Good entertainment for the whole family. And that's what'll sell any product. You know, I wonder why he did shoot Skinny Ted. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I think I'll go find out. See y'all now.